How much do you know about software security? Think you've got what it takes to diagnose a real vulnerable application? My name is Brandon. I'm a program analysis engineer working at a software security company called SEMGRAB. In this video, I'll be showing you 10 examples of common software vulnerabilities in real code, and I'm here to challenge you on how many of them you can figure out. Your goal will be to figure out what the vulnerability is, as well as how it can be exploited. I'll show you the code, and then go over the solutions with you afterwards. Give it a try, you might just learn something. Okay, let's get started with the first example. So what this code is doing is it's using the React library to render a simple web application using JavaScript. Basically what's happening is that we have this button that says return home on it. And when you click on the button, it'll execute this code, query.getName. If you trace this back, we call this function here, which ultimately returns new URL search params on this use location, which we imported from the React Router DOM library. So in case you aren't aware, what that's doing is, um, if we have a website like https colon slash slash example.com uh, slash settings, let's say, you can have something called query parameters, which are parameters to the URL, like name equals foo, that specify that there's a parameter named name that is being set to foo. All we're doing is trying to figure out what that is by using this location and getting name, which is the query parameter called name. Okay, I'll give you a second to think about it, try to figure out why this code is insecure and how it can be exploited. Okay, let's get to it. So this code is insecure because of a vulnerability called cross-site scripting. Cross-site scripting is when a malicious attacker could cause arbitrary code to be executed on your machine or browser due to visiting some kind of vulnerable website or some kind of URL. In this case, we'll be looking at the URL to go with these query parameters that we talked about previously. So you might not be aware that there's something called the JavaScript protocol, which means that if you visit a URL that looks like JavaScript colon slash slash, what comes after the slash slash is interpreted as JavaScript code and executed in your browser. That means that if I wrote a function called like do something bad here, for instance, that would cause potentially any kind of any kind of effect to happen within your browser. So if you combine this with the query parameter that we had here, it means that visiting this URL would cause clicking this button to execute this arbitrary JavaScript code, a cross-site scripting attack. To fix this, we have to make sure that the URL is okay to visit. So we're gonna try and make sure that this query parameter result we get is okay to, to visit. Um, we're gonna do that by sanitizing the URL. So we're gonna write the sanitize URL function, which takes in our URL. The first thing we're gonna do is make a user supplied URL uh, out of a URL object by passing that in. And we wanna make sure that it's safe. Now, if it's HTTPS or HTTP, then it, it's safe. It's not going to cause a cross-site scripting vulnerability. So we're gonna case on whether or not the protocol is equal to one of those things. So if the protocol uh, is equal to HTTPS, then we're good. Or if the protocol is HTTP, then we're also good. In this case, what we're gonna do is we're going to return just the URL. Otherwise, if that's not true, what we're going to do is we're just going to return something that we know is safe. So let's say slash home. And then finally, we're going to pass in the result we get from the query parameter into it using this uh, sanitize URL function. And there we go. So this will make sure that whatever we get out of this query parameter, it's going to be sanitized. So we're not vulnerable to cross-site scripting. That's it.